All right, so continuing with 1C.13 through 14, we're in example number three, and we're reviewing how to create residuals and scatter plots using technology, correct? Correct. All right, so the above data provides eight ordered pairs, and it says which function type best models the data in the table above? Okay, explain your, your answer using the characteristics from the data in the table. So if we look at here, we're going to analyze what's happening. So as the X values are increasing, what are the Y values doing? So we're going to look here. Um, X, X is increasing. What are your Y values doing? On this side, they're doing what? They're increasing up to here, right? So we're increasing. And then all of a sudden, what happens here? They're going to then from here to here, they are decreasing. Notice I'm drawing an arrow in because this is where my point changes, right? So this has to be the center or a max or min where something takes place. Does that make sense? If I'm increasing, then decreasing, what does that mean I have at this location somewhere? A maximum hints you're due now, right? You see how they're all tied together? Oh my gosh, crazy. Who knew? Um, reviewing. So we know that at this point, something is changing. So I'm increasing. And then I am decreasing is essentially what's taking place with these points. And that is something you should be able to analyze without having to create the scatter plot. Yes? Comfortably so, hopefully. All right. So I'm going to ask you guys, do you guys want me to model this using Sylvie or model it using Desmos? Which would you like at this time? Okay. I only heard three people respond and they said Desmos. So I guess... Yes, so they are building in Desmos, but the thing is Desmos won't be on free response. So if you have to find a regression on a free response, you have to be able to use handheld as well. But you will have Desmos on all your mobile choice, just not the free response part. So that's the only hiccup um, that I just wanted, you know, the disclaimer, you will have Desmos for your multiple choice calculator, but you won't have Desmos for your free response. Okay. Yeah, I don't think the free response will be this. I highly doubt it, personally, unless they change up how they did it last year. Um, but we can model. We've already done, we've been into a TI-84 regressions for the past two years. So um, I'm not really stressing it, but uh, y'all know how I feel about Sylvie. She never fails me, so. If that's who we want to use, we can always use my homegirl. All right, so I'm going to hide my floating tool. I'm going to open Desmos. I'm going to create a new blank graph starting over. So in Desmos, you're going to start off with a new blank graph, just like on Sylvie, where we would reset everything to make sure we're starting off fresh and clear before we go to stat edit. You're going to add a table. Once you add the table, you're going to input your values. So inputting my values, we have zero. Four tenths, nine tenths, one and two tenths, one and seven tenths, two and two tenths, two and nine tenths, and three and four tenths. Those are my X values. My Y values are, because I wanted to say them correctly, five, that's not a five, five, so five, and then we have 10 and six tenths. 15 and 4 tenths, 17 and 1 tenth, 18, 16 and a half, 10 and 2 tenths, and 2 and 8 tenths. All right. So once you've input it, you're going to analyze the scatter plot. Um, so right here, this little magnifying glass will adjust it so that you can see the scatter plot. Do we all see this little magnifying glass? I'm going to click it click it and it's going to adjust so that I can see my scatter plot. Based on my scatter plot and what we previously said about the data, what regression model should we do? Why a quadratic? What's that curve called? A parabola. It has a parabolic shape to it, right? No. Okay, so that tells me that a quadratic is my best model. 
in here, you have to remember, because they will not tell you how to type in the algorithm or to create the quadratic. Typing in the algorithm, if you look on the back part of your notes, I reminded you of your Desmos algorithms. They're on the back of the second page. It should say like Desmos in the box. Do you see it? Did I put it there? I think I did. Okay, so we're gonna type in the quadratic one. So typing in the quadratic one, we have Y1 tilde. Sorry, make sure it's not capitalized. Y1 tilde. AX1 shift six to square plus BX1 plus C. Huh? So you take I know how to do a calculator here. Oh, well, that was like three years ago. <laughs> okay. Sat, edit, and then stat count. Yep. Does it matter which way? No, because we know all the skills. All right. So the difference here is with Sylvie, our handy name, 2i, TI-84, she can create the equation for you. However, Desmos will never write the equation for you. It will give you your variables, and you have to write the equation for yourself, which is not that bad. It's just facts. So um, here, your equation is created. And our reason why we chose, because it says, why did you choose quadratic? Well, one, we saw that our graph was increasing then, decreasing, which is a sign that there's some type of max or min being created, correct? Um, and then just analyzing that. And then when we created our scatter plot, we saw that there was a parabolic shape created. Yes? So that's what part A is asking you. Why did you choose what you choose? Okay, now we've created our equation. So here, when you're writing the equation, it's y equals, on Desmos, I'm just gonna copy and paste. Huh? Is it necessary? Oh, it is for me right now, because I'm gonna do something else with it, sir. And this, the um, reason why I'm copying is because it just ensures that I don't, I don't miss a number, okay? All right, so there is my equation. Uh, I'm going to come over to my handy dandy notes. And it allows me to be a little lazy. And I can just insert it uh, somehow. Where's the little box for me to write this in here? It's going to write it somewhere. I just don't know where it's going to write it. Mm -hmm. yeah. I actually didn't um it it's stacked right there on my desk in the corner so this is still mm -hmm. yeah so what were you doing on Friday? <laughs> what were you doing? All right. So I need to write it so I can see it. All right. There we go. So there's my equation, just so that I can have it there. Oh, I wrote it in the right spot. Sorry. Do I do not remember Friday? We just. All right. So there's me writing it in really quick, just so that I can have it in my notes. Um, you would clearly write yours a little bit better, but make it a little bigger in life. Okay. Uh, well, I remember this now. I'm glad. So you know we're not lying to you. Okay. So that's our equation. That's how that's done in Desmos. Um, do I need to review it in TI-84? For anyone, or you guys remember stat edit stat count? You're good. Okay. That's you remember doing it in statistics. Okay. There's so many res residual plots and everything. Good. We also do it in free p algebra too. Yeah, I love that. There. Just want to point that out. All right, good. I don't have anything else to say about it. Uh, it's just residuals. All right.
I did write on the back, if you choose to use Desmos, the rules for the residuals at the very bottom. So if you ever, there are rules for Desmos. Um, and so here are your linear regression model, your quadratic regression model, and your exponential regression model. If it's any other model, like if it, if it ended up being cubic, all you're doing for cubic is adding on to your, your quadratic. So it's the modified version. So if I had cubic, it would start off as um, y1 tilde ax1. But this time, instead of to the second power, it's going to be to the third. And then you keep going, your power is reduced from there. And then it keeps going, dot, 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 dot. That's what it says. Polynomials just continue um, to expand based on the powers. Okay. So if it was quartic, then it would be ax1 to the four then bx1 to the second, then bx, cx1 to the third. I, mean, I can count four, three, two, you get what I'm saying. The powers, okay? They just keep going. Versus if you're using handy dandy Sylvie, she just simply says quad, cubic, four, you know, she keeps it simple. Um, does ones you do have to remember the rules to type in, okay? All right, yes. All right, so let's review um, our homegirl, Sylvie. We don't want to abandon her. So with Sylvie, it's, I'm going to turn it on. I'm going to reset, reset second plus 712. Second plus 712. Okay. Remember, we're going to go to stat, edit, and we input our information. So zero, four tenths. Nine tenths, one tenths. It's a lot faster when you have the device in your hand. So if you finish inputting it before me, good job. Okay, so I have my X values in. Now I'm going to put my Y values in. Five, 10 and six tenths, 15 and four tenths, 17 and one tenth. 18, 16, and 5 tenths, 10 and 2 tenths, 2 and 8 tenths. Oh, no. I skipped something. I'm trying to fix it. What did I skip? 5, 10, 15, 17, 18, And then two and eight. All right. So then if I want to see the scatter plot, does anyone remember how to see the scatter plot? Anyone? What do I do if I want to see the scatter plot before to know which? I'm going to go to second y equals and turn it on. So I'm going to turn on the scatter plot. But once I turn on the scatter plot, I'm going to go to zoom stat, which is nine to see my scatter plot. Look at that beauty. Clearly, it's a what? Quadratic. Quadratic, huh? Yes. So after we put our list in, we're going to go to second y equals, and we're going to turn on our plot. You turn on the plot. The shortcut to turn on the plot is just going to y equals and bolding it. So you can just go to y equals and bold, and it automatically turns it off from there, too. And now we're going to go to zoom. And you got to go to nine because you're telling your calculator, I want to look at the stat data that I put in. So zoom nine, and there it is. Okay. And I now know that it's clearly a quadratic. So I go to stat, count, and I'm going to go to quad regression. Do we see that? Mm -hmm. Quad regression, five. And I want to make sure that it graphs it for me. So you see where it says store regression EQ, store regression equation. I'm going to store it. You either can do VARs and press a bunch of buttons or alpha trace and press one to make it store it as the equation for you. Once you hit enter, it's going to do all the thinking. It says, ta-da, here's your equation. Are those numbers any different than what we already had? Nope, they're not. The only difference here is if you go to y equals, it's written in the equation for you. It 
it rounds all the way to like the 10. And then when you go to graph, it'll graph it for you. It's graphed for you. And then the table values, if you go to second graph, the table values are also already there for you. Okay, another good feature of putting this in is that now, if you just want to evaluate at a specific point, you hit alpha trace. And I'm saying, I want you to evaluate equation one at 100. Hit enter and it will evaluate equation one at, well, function one at 100 for you. Because you have now stored your regression and it's stored in the calculator as your Y1. Does that make sense? Yeah. How do we feel? Good. All right. So that's the TIE4 method. You've now done Desmos method. The choice is yours. Okay. All right. Now we're on to the 14 part of this, which is residuals. So um, that's why I combined them. Then you want to like, they go hand in hand. Like you can't do the other part without one part. All right. So residuals. When we use a model to predict values, we expect our model to produce values that are reasonably right, right? Because it's prediction. It's not going to be exact. We're using it as a prediction, correct? So um, what's called is your residual. Your residual, well, let's wrap about it. Residual stands for um, actual minus predicted value, okay? Um, you may see it as Y minus, what is that called in stats? The little hat on the Y. This little... A little hat. There's a name for this. Oh, thing. we just bought that hat to be honest. Why hat? No. Yeah, that's is it why hat? Okay. I was like, is it something funny? Something different? Um, um, why hat or why cap or something? Some, each teacher says it differently. But either way, this is what it is: is your actual minus your predicted value. Okay. Um. And I remember it as wrap. Like, that's what I told myself in school. Wrap. Let's wrap about it. Residual means we're wrapping about it. And that helps remember it's your actual minus your predicted. Okay. Um, so, for example, we're going to do that with this. You're going to choose how you want to, um, what do you call it? Create your table um, and create your, your model. So, you either can choose to use Desmos or you can choose to use... Um, TI-84, I'm actually going to use TI-84 because that's what I prefer and that's what I'm most comfortable with. But you can use Desmos if that is your choice, all right? So it says here, uh, using the model from example one, what is the residual um, of the baby that is five weeks old? Interpret the meaning of the value in context of this problem. So um, I'm going to create the model, the regression model, and then I'm going to find the residual minus, okay? And that's where that really cool feature of using your calculator mode comes into handy. Got it? All right, so here we go. Starting from scratch, I'm going to hit second plus seven, one, two. And I'm going to put in my data. T is going to be my L1. W is going to be my L2. And here we go. So we have four, five, six, eight, and 12. Then we have four and two tenths. Four and four tenths, four and eight tenths, five and one tenth, and five and seven tenths. Okay. After that, I want to see what's going to be the best model. Is it linear, quadratic, cubic, exponential? What's going to be my best model? So I'm going to go to y equals and I'm going to turn on plot one. I simply y equals hit enter. And notice when I arrow down, plot one is bolded. That turns on your plot one. You can also do second y equals and turn it on, however you want to do it. But there's a lot of built-in shortcuts, so I utilize them when possible. I'm going to go to zoom nine. And so I'm looking at my data. And it looks like it's a pretty good linear option, right? It looks like it's going to be a linear model. So I'm going to create a linear model to represent my data here. All right. So stat, calc, and we're going to go to linear regression. The key thing here is you have to store it, okay? So how you choose to store it is up to you, but the shortcut to storing is alpha trace. Alpha trace. 
allows me to store it as my Y1. So I'm going to store it, and then I'm going to calculate. And there is my regression model for this situation. So I'm just going to write it in my notes to have. So we have Y equals 0.185X plus 3.545. Okay. If you want to signify that this is your, your regression model, that's where the hat comes in, the Y hat. This is the regression model. It's not the exact. It's what I'm using to make my predicted values. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. Now it says for we're making finding the residual for a five week old. Okay. Currently, the five week old baby weighs what? What what does it actually weigh? Four point four kilograms, right? So the actual baby weighs 4.4, our predicted value. So to find our predicted value, that's where we're going to do the alpha trace Y1, and we're looking for the predicted value of the baby at five weeks old. So the predicted value is what? 4.47 kilograms. So that's my actual, that's my predicted. Yes. Yes, ma'am. For the store, I hit alpha trace and put one for Y1. Mm -hmm. And then you calculate. Okay, if it's not stored, this part won't work. Does that make sense? Okay, so now your residual. Residual, remember, we're going to wrap about it. I'm going to wrap about it. So that means it's our actual minus our predicted. So our actual value minus our predicted value. So we have 4.4 minus 4.47. That's what our residual is going to come out to be. And we get what? What'd you get? I don't know. <laughs> what do you mean? How did I get oh, four, it? Four. I didn't see it. I thought it was like 4.7. I'm like, like, what? I don't know. That is wrong. I'll I'll double check it in the calculator. Could you, baby? You, I did it already. I was like, did I do something wrong? All right. So when you have a negative residual, that is what we call an overestimate. Does that make sense? A negative residual means that we have a overestimate of the actual value. So interpretation, it is the model overestimated the actual value. I can write. Okay. Yes, because we learned this in Algebra 2. But it is also part of the AP breakout curriculum. Okay. So, summary here a positive residual. Is going to be a what? If a negative is over a positive, a positive residual is going to be a underestimate. Is underestimate one word? It's going to be today. Yeah. Sure. Underestimate. And a negative residual means that we have a overestimate. Okay, if you remember us doing the residual plotting in Algebra 2, that's where we had our, our positive x-axis and we were either plotting above or below it. If we were on it, that is a perfect, right? So if you have a residual of zero, it is a perfect. If the residual equals zero, then it is 
perfect, right? And guys, that concludes Unit 1C. You're a I got you. 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 I